All right, what's up? Welcome in GC Live Monday episode of the show. Doing something a little bit different. Uh, have had a lot going on. Uh, missed the Friday show last week. Missed our normal time slot on Monday with everything going on. So getting in here, 8 p.m. if you're with us live. Obviously, this will be posted on all the major podcast platforms as well after this. Um, Chris, are we past your bedtime, man? Or are you, are you hanging We're in approaching. There? No, we're, we're still good. We're in the safe zone, but we're getting close, Wes. I'm worried. We yeah. might we might have to keep this one shorter because of my bedtime. So, yeah, Chris and I operate a little bit on different ends <laughs> of the the time spectrums. Chris is a, definitely an early riser. I'm a little bit more of a late riser, but you know, stay up late. And Chris also operates on just way less sleep than I can imagine at this point. That's probably the the two two kids um, thing there. But uh, welcome in. As always, no matter what time we are, we're brought to you by Clint Hammond Movement Mortgage, clinthammond.com, 803-771-6933. We'll tell you more about some of our great <clears throat> sponsors throughout the show. But uh, again, if you're in the market to buy a home, uh, call Clint. He's a mortgage broker right here in Columbia, but can help you out no matter where you are in the great state of South Carolina. Uh, let's see, man. We got, we still got some numbers on here, Chris. So, oh, yeah. That's without warning. I mean, I tweeted like, five minutes ago that we're hopping on. So without warning, I, I feel like game cognition right now is at a buzz. Now, from what I've seen the last 48 hours, it's sometimes a good buzz and sometimes a bad buzz, but it's a buzz nonetheless. Uh, you know, some good news today. Let's let's start with Jerome Simmons since he was the first to uh to lock in both privately and then publicly today. And announcing his decision, one of several guys who were on campus over the weekend. And Chris, really no surprise. I mean, I think once South Carolina offered Jerome Simmons, it was going to be tough for another school to beat them. You kind of wondered, all right, if a Georgia who has been involved, you know, if they really push and try to make this difficult, maybe they could have a say in this. But for the most part, as it played out, and then, of course, going into the official this weekend, and then after the official this weekend, it uh, w was heavily leaning, I think, to South Carolina, and he uh, wasted no time in making that official. Yeah, and he was. There's been some, uh, you know, questions about this. He was welcome home number one that was sent out yesterday by Shane Beamer. Um, so th that do kind of correspond on the timeline there. And this was one that I, I agree with you, Wes. E every, ever since South Carolina got involved and offered, we kind of knew – as the as the junior college season progressed, as the college football season progressed for South Carolina, Gamecocks were really keeping a close eye on Jerome Simmons. Eventually, saw enough to where they wanted to pull the trigger and offer. And he's a different type of guy than they've got right now on the roster. Right? You, you think about some of the that they've done a really good job this off season of retaining their interior defensive linemen. So T.J. Sanders, Tonka Hemingway, Boogie Huntley, all coming back. Nick Barrett will be back. He's the closest to Barrett in terms of being that, like, more of a space eater type, right? Those other guys, you know, a couple of them have played, you know, an end type position or straight up end in their career um, in some different looks and different packages. This is a 6'3", 330-pound guy, and he'll probably reshape some once he gets to South Carolina. But he's going to be a 320, 325, 330-pound guy who can line up, play nose for you, eat some space in the middle, and try to help let your linebackers work. And um, a guy that some people that have seen him play think, you know, has some pro potential to him. And so nice pickup, right? Because if for South Carolina, you know you wanted to get another guy in the pipeline. This was going to be a smaller class in terms of numbers at defensive tackle. But it seems like getting a junior college guy was a priority in this class. So it's done with Jerome Simmons, who is a Bamberg native. Yeah, man, and we've seen South Carolina kind of hit on a lot of these guys that they have that have kind of fit this, I would say, mold where it's been an in-state kid, has had to go JUCO, and then has worked his way back 
home basically to the state of South Carolina. And so uh, another one of those cases here. And I, I think, man, you you kind of look at what they did with that three three five at the end of the year. We still don't know if that is the direct uh, sort of direction they're going to head. Is it going to be uh, kind of their base defense moving forward? Is it going to just be part of their defense moving forward? But I, I think certainly even in some of the four-man front stuff they do, but certainly if you're going to push more and more towards that three three five look, having just a big body, true potential nose tackle, a guy who can kind of hold up um, and sometimes, uh, you know, take sometimes take up two gaps. Like I, I think that's a big part of that. So to, to me, you, you are kind of talking about filling a need as well. And then I think anytime you can bring these in-state guys back home, if they can play, it, it certainly makes sense to try and just bolster a position group. I, I don't know if you want to, I don't know if you put the expectation on him to just come in and like start right away with what they have coming back. That's probably not fair to the guys that are coming back or to him, but you do kind of start to stack up some depth there and then put them in a position. Uh, certainly you're going to lose a lot of guys at defensive tackle after this coming year. So I think important to go ahead and be trying to sort of refill that position. Yeah. Big to try to refill it. And, you know, defensive tackle has been an interesting um, – it's been an interesting position, I think you could say, in this recruiting cycle, West, because, you know, we, we saw this offseason several defensive tackles depart the program. I, and I think, honestly, would fall into that healthy transfer category, right? But you had, what, three, and one of them was Xavier McLeod, where there was a parting of ways. Then you had DeAndre Martin. Then you had Felix Hickson as well. And then you've got the upperclassmen, the guys that have played a lot of football and have been important pieces for South Carolina and the guys that we mentioned, you know, Hemingway and uh, and Sanders and Boogie Huntley and Nick Barrett, you know, kind of quietly played a pretty decent amount of snaps last season. And so, again, getting a guy with experience in the hopper who can maybe play some this year but also projecting forward to next season when – you're probably going to be relying West getting way ahead. I know, but you got to think this way. 2025, mm -hmm. you're going to be relying on young guys that you sign, maybe from the 2025 freshman class, which can be a little scary, right? Even if they're very talented. The transfer portal, going to probably be a big year for the transfer portal, I would think. And then um, any junior college guys that you can bring in there. And Jerome Simmons would follow in, fall into that category as well. So definitely important get, not just for this year, but I think really looking forward to the future as well. Yeah, no doubt, man. I, I think if you're if you're him and if you're the staff, you wanna you want to use this year to kind of get into the rotation, get into the mix, get some of that playing time at this level, and then potentially use that to kind of spur you into playing an even bigger role. Like you said, uh, 2025 sounds a long way away, but uh from a coaching standpoint and a roster building standpoint, really is is not that far away. Um like I said, or like you said earlier, going to be a little bit of an abbreviated show. Chris, uh, let's go ahead. Let's tell them about our friends at Liberty Tax. And uh, I know you've uh, met multiple times now with Larry, 803-462-5576. And, uh, hey, Chris, now tax time actually truly is right around the corner, even though we've been telling people about Larry all year. Well, it's never too early to get your plan in place, Wes. And I'm, I'm really glad that my family – and I, my wife and I met with Larry because uh, he really helped put us at ease with some things. Uh, we've got some interesting income situation just with how we structure things. We've, we've both got some 1099 income, right, that may come in on the side. He can help you sort through all that, let you know what the tax situation is for the coming year, and help you plan ahead, right? There, there might be some some things lying ahead that you, you didn't know, right? I mean, if you're a business owner, do you, are you paying your quarterlies on time? If you're an individual, are you getting the most you can out, out of your deductions and all those sorts of things? Larry can do it all for you. Uh, very knowledgeable, funny guy. And, man, he's just seen a lot in the tax game. So 803-462-5576. He can help you out. The team at Liberty Tax. No doubt, man. We appreciate Larry being a supporter here on the show for sure. Um, all right, let's, I guess, uh, keep it rolling. Again, big uh, big portal weekend for South Carolina this past weekend. And, you know, I, I think with what we've seen today, Chris, perfect example of 
take a breath. Like once once the weekend ends, just because everybody hasn't committed doesn't mean they're not going to. And so, you know, every prospect is going to kind of go about this thing their own way, their own timeline. And, um, you know, every kid is not the same. So some guys want to go ahead and just commit while they're on campus. Many of them want to just take a beat, it seems like, before making a decision. But didn't have to wait long, wait long. 24 hours after the sort of weekend ends, South, South Carolina Simmons. Then they get a second welcome home. And then not long after that, Coastal Carolina transfer wide receiver Jared Brown. He goes public with his commitment. And um, th- this, Chris, you I don't know if you've noticed this, but I'm like – I'm all about receiver recruiting. Like that's my favorite position. That's to your follow. jam now. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Like, I I dive into the. I always dive into the receivers more than I do any other position. And from the moment we started getting sort of news about who South Carolina was targeting, Jared Brown was one of my favorite guys I came across, just because he can do a lot of different things for you. And so I look at this portal class, and I think. I think they easily need three guys out of the transfer portal. And I can make an argument for four, honestly, if you can make it happen, if you can make it work, the right guys. But you need three good ones. And so to me, Jared Brown, especially knowing, hey, he might take a trip to, to Louisville. You were looking at he might take a trip to Auburn. Going ahead and getting him to lock it in, to commit to South Carolina and, um, you know, not make you go through that process where you're still sitting there, you're having to fill spot, try to fill spots, not knowing if he's going to fill one or not. I, I thought this maybe needs to be applauded even more by the fan base. I, I know the the reaction was good, yeah. but I, I think this is massive just to go ahead and get him locked up. I'll go into what I think he is as a player here in a second, but just um, to go ahead and, Check the box on one of those three, three or four slots out of the portal. I think is big. Well, and that goes back to 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 hit on something you said there at the beginning. It there was some kind of social sentiment here in Gamecocks country that, like, you know, you get out of Sunday. A lot of guys didn't wrap up the visit until the afternoon. Some did in the morning. A lot of guys in the afternoon. And what were there, West like nine transfer guys, eight or nine transfer guys, and then Jerome Simmons from the junior college ranks on campus. And when none of them had gone public with commitments, there was kind of a, okay, okay what do we think? Because there's so much anticipation, rightfully so. Like Gamecock fans are ready for the, the portal giveth part, right? Like they are ready, and I get it. We're, we're all ready for that. But when you don't get that payoff of, all right, when are the commit? I'm ready for some commit. I've got my coffee. I've got my other drink of choice. I'm ready to log on to Gamecock Central. X, I'm ready to see some commits, man. And they don't come. There's a little bit of, okay, what's going on here? Is this a bust? But I I think you put it well. Different timelines. And so if you're looking for some evidence on the weekend, I do think they're ultimately going to fall into different categories. South Carolina realistically they're they're not going to sign everybody that visited this past weekend for a variety of reasons some they may honestly they may find a, a better or more preferable prospect over the next couple weekends some of them must may take other visits and ultimately say no nah, I'd, I'd rather go somewhere else but the returns have are starting to stack up pretty well now that the dust is settled you have not transfer right but juco transfer jerome simmons you've got him committed right and you're in good position with some other guys where you have a legitimate shot to close, like a Rocket Sanders, for instance, or an Oscar Attaway from North Texas, the running back. But Brown is actually a really good piece of evidence for what you're talking about there, Wes, and and you hit on it. This was one of the guys, one of the few probably, that we knew he was going to take other visits. You know, he had Louisville lined up. He had Auburn lined up. And those are programs that – you know, have good offensive reputations with Brom. He Freeze obviously has a good offensive reputation. Both of those schools are really doing really well on the NIL front as well, from my understanding. And so to go ahead and get that shut down, I think was actually a sign that that's one piece of evidence that the weekend maybe end up 
it might end up quite fruitful, right? So we'll have to see what else happens. And ultimately, um, this weekend and the rest of the weekends during the portal window, they're, they're going to be judged at the end of the cycle. Who did you get out of the transfer portal? You know, it's a key transfer portal cycle. Mm-hmm. Who did mm-hmm. you get? Not who did you get on Sunday, but who did you end up signing? Yeah, and I, man, I, I'm like stuck between I, – I mean, I get – some of the frustration nobody wants to be sitting there five and seven like Gamecock yeah. fans they like y'all saw the atmospheres at Williams Bryce this this year oh yeah impressive like yeah. so impressive so sometimes I even have to stop myself and be like all right dude like um give everybody a break like fans support the absolute heck out of this program but then it is it is a little bit just um exhausting when it's like all right Take a breath. Let's see what happens with the guys who came in before we judge the weekend. And I, I thought, frankly, both Jerome and Jared sort of did everybody a service, whether you're covering this right. or whether you're just a fan waiting yes. for like waiting for that good news. All right, whew, we can breathe. Got it, got a couple of guys. Pretty good start. Patrick says, what's up with Rocket? That that's the guy, honestly. I know LT Overton, big name. Um, w- w- you know, would be a would be a good get, obviously. But Rocket is the one I think that has the potential to um, make everybody e- like completely forget about having to wait. That's right. Or make some people just say blank that weekend. Nothing went right, but you know, like turn it the other way. Yeah, no doubt. So. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm going to actually circle back to Jared Brown. Cause I do want to talk a little bit more about what he could mean. Yeah. Um, but I think there we got, we've already had multiple questions about rocket. So let's just give the people what they want. Let's talk about rocket Sanders. I, I mean, I think they're in pretty good shape at this point. It's just kind of like we talked about with Jared Brown. Are, are they in good enough shape for rocket? to just say I'm a Gamecock at some point this week? Or is Rocket saying, uh, I want to I want to see a little bit more from from you know from other comparison wise before I decide. Yeah, and that's that's something we don't know, Wes. Like when Rocket hit the portal, it was pretty easy to guess that there would be some other suitors, right? We knew South Carolina would be one, but you could also look around and say, okay, you figure Kentucky will take a run at FSU and, and maybe Florida and, and, and a bunch of other schools, right? But I don't know that we have really, and, and you correct me if I'm wrong or if you know more than me, we we don't know what the market is yet. I don't know if we have a great sense of that. Um, We also don't know if Rocket fully intends to take some other visits. He may, he may not. And so that's something I, I have a feeling, you know, we should know more in the next couple of days on that front, just as far as the intentions. But I do think, you know, piggybacking off what you said, I think the Gamecocks did quite well for themselves uh, this weekend. I think it was everything it needed to be, everything Rocket was looking for. Obviously, there's a huge opportunity. There's there's a familiarity level with a couple guys on South Carolina staff, which is very helpful. And I think all is well. And so you're probably in the best spot you could be if you're South Carolina. You would love if this process would end sooner than later. If he goes out, takes the next couple weeks, you know, takes some visits, takes a visit this weekend, maybe not so much, or, or it just gets more complicated. And if you're South Carolina, you'd like to keep this one much more simple with Rocket Sanders. Yeah, you, you just have to keep battling. It is basically what it would mean. Uh, Travis asking, is it best to get first visit or last? Portal? I think first. I say first all the way during the portal. Because you just don't um, – there's not a lot of time during portal recruiting. You know, it's a, it's like a sprint. Really, it's like two weekends. And then you start seeing, of course, guys, because they're trying to cram so much recruiting into such a um, – short period of time you see the midweeks and you know South Carolina you know has had a couple of midweeks scheduled one of them I don't think is going to happen anymore with the offensive lineman from Southern Miss but basically 
you know, I, I'd rather set the table, honestly. I, I'd rather set the bar when it comes to portal recruiting. And there's a couple of, you know, wasn't it last year, Chris, We or maybe even the year before, teams were kind of doing the thing where you technically can take a transfer portal visit in a dead period if you go through, um, what is it? If you go through orientation or something. There was some. Oh man, I wish you wouldn't ask me about that, so I can look like I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, just right say here live. I, I, yeah, there was there was something to that, and I do not even remember what it was. Something I, crazy. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Yeah, it, we I do like, remember wait, that. People are visiting places right now. Yeah. Um. What? But anyway, so I, I think they're in good shape with Rocket. If if they land him, if and when they land him, we'll dive a hundred percent into what it means how much he can help, but the, the obvious is a lot, like superstar. There aren't very many backs in the portal that have a 1,400-yard season on their uh, on their resume. Is there is there a back that has that on the resume? I don't know the answer. I don't know, but there, can, there, there, can't, there, can't, be many. there cannot be many. If there is another one, there cannot be many. Yeah, I mean, and Gamecock fans saw, uh, for those of you like me that were at Arkansas in 2022, you saw it up close and personal. The rest of you saw it on television. Um, just a guy that can do so many things, man. Um, great size, former high school receiver, and so he's really adept catching the ball out of the backfield or even down the field. Um, he's a tough runner. You know, like a like a taller, more upright runner, but also can break tackles. He can run away from you. Um, he he just has so much in the in the in the toolbox, so to speak. And man, I, I think I think we mentioned this on the show the other day, but the idea of having him and Lenora Sellers in the backfield, kind of being the lead two guys, and kind of having a little bit of an Arkansas East twenty twenty two flavor. With with Sellers being a, a true dual threat, having Rocket back there, and if you can add some more pieces, Jared Brown being one of them, obviously in the in the portal, I, I can see why Gamecock fans would would be on board with that and being really excited about that. Yeah, for sure, man. And I, I think I think it's going to be fascinating, especially if if Jared can kind of uh, or excuse me, if if Rocket can just be the headliner of this class. I think you really like the way they can maybe fill it out at, at the running back spot and kind of it, it maybe it might end up being a little bit like what we saw from the tight end room last year where they just completely reshape it. And a, a guy, Oscar Attaway, who came in this weekend, I mean, as far as we picked up a late addition to the festivities yeah, and uh, kind of pops up out of nowhere and to the fact that, you know, we weren't even sure was this a – going to be an official and unofficial. Um, but I'm pretty sure it ended up being a, a true full on official visit. Talked to him, uh, briefly and uh, shout out to him. He talked to me while he was like literally boarding uh, his flight, <laughs> which, uh, Chris, that's one of our running jokes. Normally, I sorry, I can't talk. I'm, I'm boarding, boarding the flight. Um, yeah, three hours early. Yeah. Like, wait, are you on your couch right now? <laughs> but no, he literally was boarding his flight and was like, I can talk, but talk fast. So um, talk to him. The visit seemed to go great. Really like the staff, really like the plan for him. So I, I think that's another guy that you could look at to, um, you know, potentially be added to that to that class as far as portal additions at running back. Uh, you know, there's the SC State kid. Um, somebody mentioned Marcus Carroll from Georgia State. He's committed to Missouri over the weekend. Never felt like there was much traction there. I know he was – you know, fans maybe mentioned him early on. Wasn't really a ton of traction, I think, on either side on that one. But, yeah, running back room could look a lot different this time next year. And, I, I uh, love I, – I think, Wes, you're, you, that was a new one coming up with, like, the tight end reshape. I, I think that's perfect, right? Because that it was it was just a clear out of the tight end room last year. Yeah. Like, like nobody, right? Like, no scholarship guys. And South Carolina ended up bringing in, what, you know, three guys from the portal mm -hmm. and three guys from the high school ranks, you know. And now do we do we see that 
Do we see six this year at running back? I'm a little more doubtful on that. Yeah, I don't, we're not going to see that. We're not going to see six. But could we see like a total of high school and portal four? I think it's very realistic. Yeah. You know, and so we know Matthew Fuller's committed at the high school level. The Gamecocks like him, want to keep him uh, in the fold. But you know you need a couple from the portal, right? And, and so you start kind of stacking it up. You know, Rocket technically has a red shirt, but as long as he goes through a season healthy, he's not red shirt, and he's playing a season and, and being done. Um, Oscar Attaway has actually played I, – I don't have his log in front of me, Wes. What would he be? Would he have another year after so this one? So, I um... – I went down that rabbit hole. Okay, good. Y'all don't You're quote me the on people this one. work. Yep. Yeah, y'all don't quote me on this one. But I we think <laughs> I think Attaway has one has one year left, but he would be a great case for an additional one. I okay. think. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so let's say he has two, right? Well, yeah. now you're stacking a, an additional. And then let's say um and I'm I'm don't quote me on this, you know, but another guy that's out there is Jawarn Howell from SC State, who would be a multiple year guy if you brought him in. And so, you, and kind of similar thing to the tight end room, how South Carolina did it last year. They brought in Nick Elksness, they brought in Trey Knox, they brought in Josh Simon with kind of varying levels of eligibility. Um, and, and I think you could see that at running back this year. They need a couple guys who can make an immediate impact. But you also don't want to bring in three or four guys to the program that literally have one year remaining, right? You want to kind of be able to hit both of those needs. And so um, if they could get Rocket, if they could get Oscar Attaway, maybe get another, if they could keep Matt Fuller committed, and they get all those guys in the same room, that would be a nice reshape where you're adding some talent, you're adding some different skill sets. You still have Juju McDowell on the roster. You still have DJ Braswell on the roster. So you've got – kind of a unique mix of guys and and some varying eligibility levels as well. Yeah, for sure, man. I, I think that's that's really what you want. And um, so, yeah, I, I just looked it up. It was what I thought. So, Attaway, technically, like right now, he officially has one year left. But he redshirted, and then he missed an entire season with a um, with the knee injury. So, he, he would be a guy especially – in today's world where he would he would he would have a great case i think for another one um i'll triple check that and make sure that's right before we write it everywhere but just looking at it real quick that's what it looks like to me um let's see hey jared brown real quick i, I thought this was kind of fascinating chris so and i i see a couple people just who are like i'm not impressed with the portal stuff so far um you got you got to go back first of all, guys, to the difference in healthy transfers and not healthy transfers. And can can you add as much talent as you lose? I, I think. And so the interesting thing, the portal, it used to be hard to sort of put a a value on the you know a guy's on field value, and now you know on three they're attempting to rate like everybody when they hit the portal, basically. And the way they've done that from a logistics standpoint, Chris, is um, they've tried to rate guys just when they're in college, period. And then it makes it very, very easy to sort of turn that into a transfer portal ranking. So among the players that are on South Carolina's transfer list at this point, so – this would be transfers out or transfers in. Jared Brown, the, the only guy with a higher rating than Jared Brown is, as you would expect, Juice Wells. <laughs> yep. So, uh, just according, and again, this is very imperfect. Ratings and rankings are imperfect anyway. When you're talking about the portal, you know, I, I think it, you're, and you're trying to compare, hey, this guy's bumping up from FCS or, this guy was a five star, but it was three and a half years ago. It, it's kind of hard to necessarily put a rating, but still, it, I think it is interesting that we knew Juice was going to be very, very difficult to replace. But 
Um, right below, Juice has a rating of 90. Jared Brown has a rating of 89. And then nobody else, nobody that South Carolina has lost other than Juice has a rating that is as high as Jared Brown's. And so I think, yeah, he's coming from Coastal, smaller school, but this is a guy that did everything for them, man. Had He has 400-something career rushing yards. That's just in two seasons. We know how they had that, like, very unique spread option offense that they ran under Chadwell. Had something kind of similar this past year. Uh, but they would use him in all that, you know, jet sweep, orbit motions, all that different, um, you know, sort of variations of the option. And so he's a guy that I, I think is just to catch the ball and, and go make something happen type guy. He's got speed to take the top off. Um, I, I think he can play outside. And if you've got him and you got McGowan, then, you know, maybe if, if they're both starting, Jared probably is the outside guy. But I kind of like Jared Brown in the slot, to be honest with you, man. I, I think his skill set, really to me, he is what you were hoping that A.B. was going to end up being um, in terms of production. Yeah, and, and look, Jared Brown, to me, Wes, is not as much of like a number one receiver, like a number one option, um, but he's a guy that can make – I think he's got the tools to be able to make a good many plays for you. And so he's an important piece of this receiver room revamp. And the total picture of what that ends up being, we don't know yet, right? Because they're going to bring in some other guys. Uh, they hope this weekend. I mean, one of them's the kid West from Indiana, who is more of a number one type receiver, Donovan McCulley. He's 6'5", 195, you know, in Kentucky, Michigan going after him. He's more of your number one type. And so if you can get him on campus and if you could land him and then you get Brown and then you get, you know, maybe Jade McGowan and then you get maybe another, it the picture looks better, right? So, yeah, I mean, it, it's all about who do you sign out of the portal who do you replace out of the portal? Juice is going to be tough to replace. Mitch Jeter is going to be tough to replace, right? Mm -hmm. But you can't look at it and say, okay, and I can't even remember the number off the top of my head of total transfers. Let's say it was like 12. I mean, what was it? 12 to, yeah, 15. I think it's about 15 or 16. 15. Let's, let's call it 15. You can't say, well, you got to replace 15 starters. That, that's just not the case. That's kind of disingenuous. Yeah. Um, now, do you need to build some depth at some of those spots to kind of backfill? Absolutely. But can you go upgrade through the portal even? It's hard to envision a scenario where you say, we're going to upgrade from Juice Wells. We're going to upgrade from Mitch Jeter. This year, you're, you're, not probably, you're, you're, you're not doing that. But can you get close? And can you build some more depth at running back as compared to last year? Can you build some more depth at receiver as compared to last year? Um, yes, those things are possible. Um, mm -hmm. And so if if you're better in a couple other areas, you know, the sting of losing juice, but here's the thing, Wes, you're also losing Xavier Leggett and juice. That yeah. makes it tougher. But what can you go out and what what can you sign? And Jared Brown, he's I think he's a nice piece of this class. We'll see where the rest of it goes and how it plays out. Well, and I, I look at it like this, man. You're so you, you never really had Leggett and Juice on the field at the same time this year, except for a That's very right. brief time period. So you're really trying. All right, are you going to upgrade from Leggett with what he was this past year, or Juice with what he was two seasons ago? Pr probably not. Um, if you do, then somebody has just taken a huge step forward in development, just like Leggett. It, it, now, if you'd have told me in the offseason, hey, South Carolina's going to lose juice for pretty much the entire year. Um, do you think they could upgrade? I'd have said, ain't no way. <laughs> and Leggett went out there and did it. So you, you never know what development is going to look like. You know, you, like you never know what a guy can do taking a step forward. So I would look at it. Are you probably going to upgrade over juice slash X, however you want to look at it? Um, no. Could you upgrade the receiving core as a whole? I think is a is a more possibly even a more valuable question and possibly 
something where you can at least positively say maybe, like it's possible. I, I think Jared Brown would have been, let's say, Juice, you know, didn't play this past year. With the guys South Carolina had, Jared Brown would have been the second best wide receiver on this team this past year, I think. Agree? Or you got to think about it? Yeah, I, yeah, I could see that. I, I think that's probably safe to say. I think it would have been Leggett, then Jared Brown, as far as healthy, available wide receivers. So that, that's everywhere. that's sort of where, you know, where where I slot him. If people are sort of wondering where he would be, but who you know who knows? Maybe he takes a step forward um, as well. Anyway, all right, guys, we'll tell you about one more great sponsor. It's our friends at Game Time. Download the Game Time app. You see it right there. And for a limited time only, and as always, um, there's fine print. I don't know what the fine print is, but read it. It exists. I have to tell you that. Hit redeem code GAMECOCKS, your very first order on the Game Time app. You're going to get $20 off. Uh, so go to GameTime.co or just go to any app store and download the Game Time app, uh, whether it's uh, sports, music, comedy shows, Theater shows, uh, they got everything on here. I know we've always been, we've all been in a spot where you were looking for tickets and could not find them. Well, promise you, Game Time app is going to help you find the best deal. And they can promise that because if you find a better deal in the same section for the same event and it's cheaper, they're going to refund you 110% of the cost of your ticket. So go check that out. Again, Game Time app and GameTime.co. Appreciate them being a sponsor of this show and many more on the own three network. Um, all right. We said it was going to be a short show, but it just, there's just too much to talk about. It just doesn't work like that. A lot. Chris did uh let's reward the people. We got a lot of people on here. Let's reward the people that have stuck around. Let's do it. And, um, did Chris, did you see my tears of where I felt South Carolina stands? With the prospects. Yeah. I, lo I love a good old tier system. I broke out one on the GC Takeover Hour on 107.5. A different tier system, but please, let's hear it. So, um, I, I felt like the people just needed some some calm brought to them. Yep. So, this, this is what I posted on, on Gamecock Central. This is for subscribers only. But I'm we're going to talk about it. I'm going to tell people what it says uh, since they stuck around with us tonight. And while I talk about it, I'm also going to throw up this, which $1 for the first two months if you're not a subscriber. So come check us out. Code SCAR1, S-C-A-R-1. But here's how I have the weekend tiered as of 101 p.m. earlier today, Chris. I had... Tier one, this is the tier we call feel pretty good about. That means obviously feel pretty good about South Carolina landing them. Tier one, Jerome Simmons at the time was already committed. Tier one, Rocket Sanders. Continuing, Gerald Kilgore. Jared Brown now would be committed. He was not yet at the time. Oscar Attaway. That's who I had in the feel, feel pretty good about level. The next tier is I feel neutral or just to say we are still gathering info. And I said it like that because, Chris, don't you feel like maybe something – we can maybe even do a better job of explaining this. Sometimes no news is not bad news. Right. And sometimes we just haven't heard the, – the feedback just hasn't presented itself yet. Mm -hmm. Um. So, I said neutral. Lt Overton, pretty quiet. Pretty quiet there, honestly. In, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, Tyler Neville, Jaden McGowan, and uh, I, I've got. I, I've actually made some tweaks to this since I posted it, and then I said, not great on Elijah Green, the running back. And that was more just because there's only so many running backs 
that um, are going to want to come share a backfield. And That's right. The feedback has really just been that Elijah maybe wants to go be the dude somewhere. Um, I have – somebody asked me, tell us more or anything new. And I was like, guys, it's been five hours. Like, <laughs> not much has changed. But I actually think McGowan – I think I would actually start to trend back upwards a little mm -hmm. bit. Some of that is reading tea leaves. Yep. But I would trend McGowan back up. I would actually probably – is is Nev like I would trend Neville down potentially down into the Elijah Green not happening category, potentially. I don't know if I would completely say that I know it's not happening or that we know it's not happening, but reading the tea leaves there, I could see South Carolina going a different direction at, at tight end, and I could see him going a different direction with his decision. Yes. Where where are you at on on my tears? Yeah, I um I'm with you in full agreement. Um the note that I would add, which you kind of already alluded to this, is with McGowan, I think you're kind of like you or anybody who agrees with you, including me, you're kind of like projecting that a little bit more, you know, yeah. like it, it it could end up that way. Um these things aren't just like like a guy doesn't just visit and then it's just boom this is what's happening you know sometimes there's some nuance to these things or almost always and um i think i think that's kind of the mcgowan situation there's some nuance i think lt overton right because a little bit harder to predict that one on, on all sides uh, alabama's also involved right will he go visit there this weekend are they going to go in home with him there's kind of a lot to sort out there among other things. And so some of these guys kind of harder to peg. So if I, if I was making my own tier system, I think I, mine would line up pretty much exactly with yours. And there, I mean, if we got really, really deep, there would probably be some levels within the tiers, but I wanted to make it just simple. Hey, here's where we kind of think that things stand right now. And so I, I think, again, if you're, if you're listening to this guys, because, yeah, we record this. We put it on the podcast. If you're listening to this on Tuesday evening, it may have changed five times. So that's uh, that, that's always possible in transfer portal. It's always possible in any recruiting, but certainly transfer recruiting. It happens quick, man. Like, it, it can move in a hurry. So, you know, we'll see. But that I think that's a good snapshot is what I would call it uh, of kind of where things are right now. Ashley asking uh, who is interested in McGowan, uh, as Will said, yes, Boston College. We'll see if other schools pop up there, too. There could be others, but right now it appears that Boston College is the other one to watch. Um, Chris, did you see while um, while we were going on or right before we went on that um, DeBron Gatling officially, he 100% opened his recruitment, but it was not a decommitment the other day. Now we've got an official decommitment from Texas A&M. Hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um, very interesting. Um, I actually texted somebody who kind of is, is familiar with that recruitment and kind of asked Wes a few minutes ago, um, is it time to break out the eyeball emoji for, for that particular situation? And, you know, that one's been interesting, Wes, because DeBron's very quiet. He doesn't really do interviews. And even people who talk to him don't have a great sense of what's going on. You could tell that even though he's committed with a to A and M formerly, you know, even when he was, he was still looking around, still open. Took the visit to South Carolina during the season, and you got the sense that you know maybe he'll flip somewhere, just straight up flip, whether it's South Carolina or somewhere else. Gamecocks are still involved there. After the coaching change, makes sense that he's officially opened it up after the coaching change at A&M. Now, does that automatically mean South Carolina? I can't sit here and say that. I think the Gamecocks are certainly in the mix, Wes. Are there others in the mix? Possibly so. And I don't have a great sense of how it'll shake out. I, I do think if you're kind of looking 
for a team that that makes sense, South Carolina is there. Um, they've been engaged with them. They talk to them often, from my understanding. Uh, but just don't quite know where that one will go yet. But, it, you know, another in- intriguing non-portal option at wide receiver, I like his game a good bit. Yeah, man, I, it sounds like South Carolina does too from everything we've heard. So uh, I got to keep an eye on there. Speaking of, I uh, I was at Shrine Bowl today checking in, and um, I, I wanted to see just to, to completely close the book, Bray Staley. I chatted with him briefly. I mean, I, I think that book is completely shut. Like, he he seems dead set on Tennessee at this point. And, um, you know, Chris, I was a little bit surprised that Quay Scott went ahead and, and locked in with Kentucky. We kind of yep. had anticipated, and he even said publicly he was going to take an official visit on Saturday after the Shrine Bowl. Word from him today at the Shrine Bowl. Um sort of backed up exactly what he said in that tweet that, you know, he he's going to Kentucky. So that was a, a couple of things that I wanted to kind of just check in on, you know, while up there. But um, three Gamecock commits were in the game, Josiah Thompson. Um, and then, of course, uh, Blake Franks and uh, Kelvin Hunter as well. Josiah, man, whew, that kid – he he looks the part to to say the least. You can confirm he's big still. Can confirm. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a uh, man, Wes. That's uh, I, I was talk. I get, got your take on this earlier when you called into the radio show. So let me have you restate it. You know, Josiah Thompson has almost flown under the radar. I think in Gamecock Nation, uh, he's flown a little bit under the radar as much of, as a guy his size, who's a five-star prospect, on three has him number nine in the country, the entire country, regardless of position, top ten in the country, at a position that people have been talking about for a few years now, about recruiting big-time offensive linemen. He's committed to the Gamecocks solidly, has been for a while, Shrine Bowler, five-star. This is a huge get. And I know the point you made earlier is, if this was like this big recruiting battle that had gone down to the wire, people would be locked in. But this mm-hmm. kid committed early and has really never wavered. Yeah, we'd be, dude, you'd be getting in your ass, Chris. What's up with Josiah? What's up with Josiah? What's up with Josiah? And, um, you know, some of it has been, he's kind of, he's always been highly ranked, but he has steadily just risen up. And our boy Charles Power, once again, all over it. And so, uh, you know, I, I think uh, some of the rest of the injury is, industry has been kind of catching up there. But looking at Josiah today, 6'7", like legitimately 6'7", and um, about 280 pounds. He'll keep adding weight. He is set to – so he had South Carolina in home last week, and then he's going to go to uh, the what used to be the Army. You know, now I guess it's just like the All-American Bowl, the Adidas one. Um, out in Texas, and then he'll be on campus at South Carolina. So uh, I think he's a guy still going to have to keep adding weight, and, you know, that'll be a part of it developing. But I, I like the future of this kid. Potentially, Chris, what do you what do you think about um, – and then we're going to get out of here. Gamecock retweeter asking one last confirmation on Dylan Stewart. Yeah, things, you know, I think they look as good as they can look with five stars, guys like that. You always just got to get it to the finish line, right? But – I think Carolina in a good spot. Potentially, Jalen Nichols coming back, reclaiming one of those tackle spots. Um, you know, Big Tree, I think, could slide to right tackle. I think Big Tree could play inside at guard before his career is over, potentially. You got Marquis, who really was the best of the bunch of the freshmen. Until he got hurt. Uh, obviously, you got Troy Ball. Rashawn Lee's expected back. But I think Josiah just maybe learning behind a Jalen Nichols for the beginning of last year. Or get the beginning of next year. Jesus, it's too late. Um, <laughs> would be a perfect scenario for him, though, before ultimately being your future left tackle, in my opinion. 
that would be your ideal scenario, Wes. You'd love to bring, be able to bring in some guys and not have to throw them in the fire. And Thompson may be good enough to do it, you know. Um, certainly South Carolina had a couple guys and would have had a third if not for injury that were good enough to do it. And you're going to take your lumps as a freshman no matter how talented you are um, playing playing against the schedule that South Carolina plays played last year and will play on an annual basis. It's going to be a tough deal, right, as, as a true freshman to do that. But uh, they'll be better for it, no doubt. And, um, you know, another solid class coming in for South Carolina with actually all in-state guys. Josiah is kind of the headliner there. And this is a guy that has just a ton of potential, is, is a great prospect that checks every box you're looking for. But if they could stay healthy, you know, I feel like you go in feeling better overall about your picture on this O-line next year. Yeah, and no, a fantastic kid too, man. Like he's uh, – Josiah's not the most talkative guy, but just a, a really polite kid and I, I think is about the right things. I know that staff over there at Dillon cannot say enough good things about him. He was working – First team, left tackle today. Uh, Blake was working right tackle. I think Blake Frank's probably more of a guard, ultimately, in, in college. Uh, I think that's the anticipation uh, within the program and kind of watching him, I think he's a guard. But uh, we'll be playing some tackle this week. And then, dude, they had Kelvin Hunter almost like a Sam linebacker um, and kind of how they were – like he was kind of a nickel, like he was kind of over the slot, but then they were bringing him off the edge. And – you know, Shrine Bowl, those bowl games, they just kind of get into a base defense for the most part. But uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. He was out there running around doing that. But anyway, all right, we're 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 over time here. This has been good, though. Appreciate y'all. Maybe I guess, Chris, we got to do more of these, huh? <laughs> yeah, looks like it, man. Appreciate uh, everybody. Can, can we make a promise? If, if the rocket lands, we'll do an emergency – episode no matter what time we'll past my bedtime no, no matter what time oh all right well call me um you might have to call a few times if it's like midnight i will be asleep but just keep yeah, calling rocket, don't do that to us, man. <laughs> I'll, I'll hey i'll start some coffee at midnight and we'll we'll have at it we'll, we'll do we'll do an hour on rocket and see i I, I hesitated. Ian's laughing at me here. Chris laughed at me too. I hesitated with how I was going to say it, but <laughs> in the Elon Musk SpaceX world, rockets do land, right? Like they don't just take off. Like that's a thing now. This is true. This is true. Yes. So it's true. If the rocket lands, emergency, emergency pod, emergency GC emergency live, pod. it'll happen. Yeah. Yes. All right. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate our sponsors. Dude, they, these numbers are actually huge. Um, I saw a yeah, lot of questions, too. I wish we could have gotten to all the questions. But y'all, if y'all aren't a member, please, like, take advantage of that. It's, that's a great deal, man. Take advantage. You can come on, ask me questions, ask Wes questions, hang out on the forum. You get access to all our content, like we've covered. A lot of the questions on there we've had in reports over the past few days. And we're doing the very best we can to cover it all. So if you enjoy the show, that's a good way to support us because we want to support you by bringing you all the Gamecock news that we possibly can. Yeah, dude, I wanted to get to some questions, but I felt like we would have just been bouncing all around. Like we had to yep. keep a little bit of structure to the show. But, um, yeah, again, that's the code SCAR1, $1 for the first two months. If you haven't ever subscribed, come on over. promise you you'll like it. This is actually a great time to be on there there's info just flying right now so yep. um awesome transporter life says what'd you miss sorry man you missed it all you're gonna have to go back but luckily <laughs> just rewind you can uh, catch the entire show and it'll be in podcast form probably within about 10 minutes as soon as i can get off here and, and get it posted so all right for chris i'm wes again appreciate y'all y'all are awesome y'all have a good